Well, she did mention camp meeting. And you know, sometimes you go to Uncle Joe's house and he sits you down and he'll show you our vacation pictures. Guess what? I'm going to show you my vacation pictures. But unlike my Uncle Joe, who had 200 of the things, I got three slides, maybe four, all right? How many have heard of Redwood Camp Meeting? I know we've talked about it. It's our conference camp meeting. A lot of you maybe go to Central. Only one couple I know that seem to go to all of them, and that's George and Yvonne Miller. And they were, oh, I forgot to put that picture in. <coughs> I have a picture of a George and Yvonne watching from their car, John Boonstra. And that's that little picture up there. Uh, Sean, uh, you know, as uh, one of our speakers of It Is Written, he also did that, uh, does the series, uh, what was it, Pale Horse, and a couple of other series that we've seen on, on the big screen. There's one thing I, I did not know this about Sean. He talks real fast. They must have a sign that says, slow down. Because he goes, and the Lord said, not that we understood every word, but it was a lot faster than I'm used to hearing. So Redwood Camp Meeting, this is what it looks like when I get the camp meeting. As Sylvia mentioned, Allison and I work with three and four year olds. And we have the privilege of setting up, just like the, uh, the Israelites uh, set up the sanctuary, every time they moved, they had to take it down and put it back up. Well, every year we go to camp meeting, this is what it looks like. After about three or four days of very hard work, it looks like this. A little different. You want to see that again? Before and after. It is quite a work, and we have a good crew. We have about 10 of us. Sometimes there's more just to get this thing set up, and to, 10 days later, take it all apart. It's all stored in the trailer at high ground because this. Last year, this, this site was under five feet of water. By the time we got up there, it was all, you know, like it is now. What does it look like? Last slide. Promise, I only had a couple. This is what it looks like when we're doing our thing. That's our crew. Allison and I travel from Manteca. The rest of the crew travels from Eureka. They go 40 miles. We go 300. But when we're together, we are church. We are church to three and four year olds. And it's so much fun. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of work. But once we hit the program, we have fun. I don't know if you can see it from where you're at. Up in the um, upper left hand corner, I'm leaning against my song sheet. It keeps me from tipping over sometimes. And there's Allison in the middle, and there's Uncle Vern on the end. He's from Eureka. He reminds me so much of Wes Huffman. It's scary. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there we are, and you see that we're all doing something like you would see sports teams doing, putting their hands in the middle. I learned this from Pastor Daryl Chilson years ago when I was in Livermore. We would always, before we went out and preached or, or did our jobs for God, we'd put our hands in a circle and we'd say, our best for him. <sighs> and that's what we're doing there. And you can hardly see it. My grandson all six years old, is down below. <laughs> he had his hand in there too. And then, uh, I don't know if you need to see it, but he was there with us at camp meeting. Uh, we, uh, I said this a few weeks ago, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun with camp meeting, but uh, I first went to camp meeting in 1972 with my girlfriend, Allison Wallen, at that time. And, and you know the story, right? I thought the camp was called the Seven Days of Venus camp meeting. Not to mention, I'd just gotten back from Vietnam, and my paradigm of any camp was sandbags, a hole, a foxhole, a couple guns, you know, just to make sure I'd have a defensive position at night. Here I am going camping in the great outdoors. Now, if you've seen SoCal, it's a little more open concept than Redwood. Redwood's got trees. SoCal doesn't per se. And I, I go there and I, I actually thought it was the seven days of Venus. It was a case of a mistaken identity. I had never heard of the church before. I didn't even know. They, they went to church on Saturday for crying out loud. 
I had no concept of what I was getting into, but that was when I first heard the Heritage Singers. And they were just a new group back in 72. So, so today, I'm going to talk about church. And this whole thing I'm presenting today, I forgot to bring a book, but the good news is I have a picture of it, is out of a book called This Is Church where you fit in. And it's written by this guy up here, and uh, his name is Haimon Hines, H-I-N-D-S. You'll see his name throughout the presentation. Maybe you see it on the book. And uh, he had some interesting concepts. I can't say I bought into every one of them so, uh, at the surface, but after you hear him speak, he makes some good points about church. The first thing is, he told a story about a mistaken identity. That is, a man from CNN News, he was sent to cover a, wire, a wildfire. Now, I don't know if it's in California, but we certainly have a few of those around here. And he was to cover the story. He needed to fly over the fire to see and get great pictures so he could write a great story. So he called the airport. Like you see, that's actually not him, obviously. <laughs> More cartoonish. He called the airport ahead of time. He said, I need to charter an airplane. I need to fly over, take pictures, the whole scoop. And they said, no problem. We'll have the plane waiting for you on the airstrip. And so he runs in, doesn't even check in, just runs right to the airplane. Gets on the airplane, there's a pilot sitting in there, and he says, take off! And so they do. They go way up in the air, they fly on their feet, and he gives further instructions to that pilot. He says, make sure you get low enough so I can get good pictures for my story with CNN. And the pilot looked at him and had a like, blank expression. It's going, what do you mean? He says, I'm... I'm a CNN reporter, I'm reporting on the wildfire. And he says, you mean you're not my flight instructor? <laughs> it was a pure case of a mistaken identity. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the first part. Do you know that maybe sometimes we mistake church for, uh, for other things than what it really is? And that's what he presented to us. For example, church is a building. Now, don't get me wrong. I had to think this one over, too. It's a mistaken identity if, you, if church is identified as a building. Right? I think if you think about it long enough, this is a beautiful building. I chose this morning and years ago, to come to this building because I feel the presence of God. But it's not the building. Here's his warning. And again, this guy's name is Hyman Hines. The danger with making or thinking of church as a building is that it means I can live two separate lives. I do my religious activities at church, I pray, read my Bible, and worship at church. But when I get out of church, I return to my life. In other words, if church is a place you come to, it's also a place you leave. Follow me so far? Second case he made for church with a mistaken identity. That church is an event. It's something that happens. And let's go right to his definition right away. It's something that happens once a week for a few hours. It's an experience that's supposed to fill us up, thrill us, lift us up, and make us shout. Well, the shout part, we'll work on that sometime. <laughs> but if that's what a church is, I see where there's a problem here, too. It's what we get out of it, not what we put into it. 
So there's a model coming up, I think, that will help wrap a lot of this up for you. See, church is that Bible verse that, uh, that Wes read. It. Let me read it to you. It's hard to see that one. Sorry about the small print. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the, of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Now, if you can see that model, we have God over here. We have God's people, which is not just the church or the event. It's called the church, the body of Christ. And it may be hard to see. You see a little heart there? On that little heart, it says gospel. We have the gospel. We are the church body. Not an event, not a building, but the body of Christ serving his people. And what's the goal of the church? To spread the word to the world to build the kingdom of God. Good? Church is the body of Christ. And I like what it said here. The church body is molded and fueled by God. This is all for him, for us to do his bidding. In Acts 1.8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of earth. You see what I tacked up there? It's got a little push pin and stuck it in there and took a picture of it. That's a graphic. I got Tracy. And I love this formula. If you look at it close, it says the body of Christ plus the Spirit of God equals what? A living church. In this verse, it says there are different... I've got to go over here. Sorry. There are diversities of gifts, but the same what? Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works in it all. You getting a picture of what church is? It's you. It's us. It's the body of Christ working through us to expand and build the kingdom of God. And our God did not leave us ill-equipped. If you go into uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 27 to 29, you will see a list. I, just for this purposes of showing you, here's a list of what he equips what uh, people here uh, in his church body. There are apostles, prophets, teachers, people who are uh, gifted in healing, miracle workers. Those who just help others are part of church body. Administrators, and when it comes to tongues, some of us have the gift of tongues and some of us have the gift of interpretation. All in the church body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12, it says the body is a unit, though it is made up many part, of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. Going on, 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says, But as it is, God arranged the members in the bodies, each one of them, as he chooses or chose the body of Christ the the team we have here the congregation we have here we're all gifted in many different ways some in music some like Judy is gifted in greeting you at the door every week 
There are people that are just formed to help advance the kingdom of God. And every time I do that, I think of something that I have become of late in the last few years. I am a handbell groupie. I don't know how to play the handbell, but Allison does. And I follow her around like some people follow those rock groups. I enjoy listening to the handbell. And when I read texts like there's one body, there's one spirit, and of course, one God, I think of the bell choir. Who can tell me the purpose of a bell choir? A simple purpose. Well, I have it right here. Each person has a note to play to sound like one instrument. Make sense? It's not what we are as a church. Don't we all have kind of a note to play to sound like one instrument? For example, I have some bells up here, and I'm going to make some sound. I sort of got lessons this morning. That good? Good. It's a nice note by itself. I'm going to ask Sylvia to come up and help me. She actually is a handbell person. And maybe Diana, too. Have a bell. <laughs> That's as much as I'm going to ring. <laughs> Let's try, uh, just add another note. Let's see what it sounds like. Uh, let's do one of Diana first. Even better. Oh, man, I tell you, that, that is so cool. Did I use the right ones? <laughs> Listen what it sounds like when you add more notes. Let's do one at a time. Thank you, Facilia. Did someone get the door? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And, and, and they're so shiny. I love that part too. All right, together. Better than just one? Yeah. And that's the way God's church is. If we all do our various gifted talents, if we all exercise, and thank you, ladies. It's okay. <laughs> if we all do with one thing in mind to advance the kingdom of God and all do our different parts, we'll harmonize just like those notes. It's unity. It's harmony. And you all have a note to play in God's church. Well, I had to get a picture in here of an actual bell choir. No, it, this was a, a, a miniature duet. <laughs> but that's uh, Allison. It's the second one from the left. Actually, the first one on the left, I've known her since she was this tall. Now she has her own kids. But they, uh, they play bells together, and they really sound good. I'd like to have them come here someday. That would be cool. Because <laughs> I, I did this sermon once before, and you know what the title was? A church full of dinglings. <laughs> I didn't roll that into the title this week because of the book thing and all that. But you get my point. It's a thing that we all do because God has given us all gifts of all different kinds. I used to, when I used to hear these sermons, I would call them body part sermons. If you've ever read the, the rest of 1 Corinthians, you would talk about the eyes and the nose and the hands and the feet and everything, they all have to work together because there's one body to make it work, but they are the different elements of the human body. And uh, in San Ramon, there was a pastor there that did like every week. And so we called it the body part sermons. And now I look at this with the different eyes and I realize he was right on. Because out of Corinthians, it talks how we can't do it by ourselves. The pastor can't do it by his self. And so here's this verse again. We're, go, we're supposed to go out, preach, teach, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. 
That's our call. And as it says in the line, I got ahead of myself. We all have a note to play. But then, have we been taught anything by Pastor Tyler? You know, he's just finished a series. Well, he didn't finish it totally, but the last segment of grace. He's done what? Old Testament grace? New Testament grace? Grace is the key to our being. Knowing that grace has been given to us by Jesus is a powerful thing. And that's why we should be able to go out and share this with those around us. Whether it be somebody at work, your neighbor, or someone just walks in the door. It's the good news. You hear that term a lot. It's the good news in a world that needs some good news. And uh, if you uh, want to re-listen to this, I know I'm a part of the media team. You can listen to it on audio at tracysdachurch.org. Look under media. Or you can watch it on film as well. I told you when we started that the music was part of the sermon. And I went back to all the music and pulled out these words and see if they don't fit what we're talking about. We are all one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. And they'll know we are Christians by our We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. Together we will spread the word that God is in our land. Cleansed by the blood out of the family of God. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone you want to pass it on. Side by side we stand waiting God's command. Soldiers, all are we to go where Jesus leads. We'll fight the foe and we shall overcome. I'll meet you in heaven. We'll sing songs together. Brothers and sisters, I'll be there. Praise the Lord. We all will be there. And I could have pulled so much more out of those songs we sang this morning. It was it kind of strange going back so far or maybe seeing these songs for the first time? It is the Word of God in music. I've often been said or I've often been told there's nothing more powerful than just music. So today, as I wrap up the sermon part, yeah, you get to go home early, huh? This is, what's the two letters in the middle? You are. You are church. You take it with you wherever you go. Even a meeting on the street can be church because you are church. So today, so I'm going to try something a little different. Usually a pastor will come up and give you a, a stirring, great benediction. I didn't have one because you're going to sing it. I have one more song. Why don't you stand up?